Adonai, Adoneno. James, go sit down, will you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to open in prayer. We have a nice young man here that's going to pray again. So all you ladies, take off your wigs. I would have had to do that. We all had to cut your hair. Okay, sweetheart, go ahead. Father God, we've come to thank you for another week, another day, for all that you do and all that you will do. Please be with the ones who need you and give us your spirit of love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now let's open in another prayer for me so that I don't get ranting and raving and telling all these crazy stories that you've heard probably 20 times before. <laughs> Father God, I just ask that you be here today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Father, I ask that everything I say bring glory to you, Father God, and help me, Lord, not to be long-winded, but help me to get right to the point. We just give you all the glory and the praise today and the thanks, Father, for all that you have done for us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Well, the one scripture that really touched me this week was to be anxious for nothing. Anxious. Do you ever get anxious? <laughs> I think it's a trait that we have. We get anxious. It's like, what am I going to do? I bit most of my nails off this week. And, and I really don't even know what I was anxious about, but they tasted good, so I just... <laughs> but, but this scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything, pray and suffocate with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, that's our brain, his peace, will guard your hearts and minds through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus. I woke up this morning. I didn't sleep real good last night. I think it was like 3 o'clock. kind of doing all these half all-nighters now. And uh, I woke up this morning and I was singing that old hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And I copied just the first verse of it down, but it's Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. O soul, are you weary and troubled? I've, I've been there. No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. And then it says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. This, uh, for the last few weeks, I've been watching, you know, different death experiences where people have went to heaven and come back and they, they say, wow, we see this big light. You know, we see this and we do this, and, and, and then the Lord says, go back. Go back and tell them of my love. Go back. But they said, you know, they said we didn't want to go back. We didn't want to go back. It was such a wonderful experience. And I thought about that this week, and I thought, Lord, you're so mighty and so powerful. And even though we get all excited and anxious and biting our fingernails and trying to figure it out with our own understanding, which we can't, we really can't. If we could only get to that place where we say, Lord, here it is. Here it is. You promised. Every promise in that Bible is for you and me. Every, every promise, every promise is for us. And, and it's like, but it's, and I, I started to think, now how, you know, how do we get that up here in our head? Because automatically when something goes wrong, what do we do? We start trying to figure it out. I do. It's like, okay, now wait a minute. Now I'm better. I, I, I've got a lot more patience. And if you don't have patience, pray for it. Pray for patience. God will give it to you. Because that is one of the fruits of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. One, one day I'm going to go through the, all of the fruits of the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is here and, and he's, he's like, okay, now what do you need? Well, I need patience. 
okay, I'll give you patience. And the, the closer you get to the Lord, the more that you get in the Word, the more that you pray, the more that you get all the gifts of the Holy Spirit inside of you. You get stronger inside. And you get bolder inside. And you get to that place where you say, you know, someone comes along and says, oh, Annie, you're a fanatic. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? I'm a really happy fanatic. You might be going out there trying to get really happy. And maybe you're happy for a few hours, but you're not going to be happy for long. But I'm happy, and I'm not saying I'm happy all the time because things come along, but you know what I am most of the time? I have a peace inside, a peace and a contentment inside that it doesn't matter what takes place in my life. It doesn't matter because whatever comes my way, God is in total control of my life. Now, how do you get there? How do you get there? I used to think, well, maybe if you go to church a lot, you know, or maybe if you pray a lot, or maybe if you, you know, help others a lot, or maybe if you just, you know, eat good food and live the way God wanted you to live, maybe all that will come and you'll have this peace and you'll have that. You know what it is? It all boils down to total surrender. Total surrender. We fight in the flesh. I mean, we fight, don't we? Honestly, we do. We struggle in the flesh. But if we can say, okay, Lord, I am willing to give you my life. Not just, not just say, well, okay, I'm coming up here and I'm going to say the sinner's prayer and I'm going to get my name written in the book of life and yay, when I, when I go, I'm going to go to heaven. No, there's a better life. I mean, that's a good life and that's what we should do. But there is a better life down here. And we shouldn't have the stress. You know, I was in so many messes in my life, and I always figured that if my life went kind of smooth, I couldn't handle it because I was waiting to, you know, get a black eye or something. I was expect I, I wanted I didn't want to live that life, but that was the life I was so used to that I got involved with people that have totally abused me. And if I didn't have them around me, it was like, oh, I can't I can't survive because. You know, like I can't, I've got to be in this relationship where people are mean to me. You kids like that? Or is that just for adults? You maybe get like that sometimes, where if your house is all chaos, oh, I'm happy. But you're not really happy, but you feel contented in that situation because you're so used to it. And, and Jesus says, I've come to give you life and give it more abundantly. I want to make your life happy. Not just in heaven, but I want to make your life happy here. I know um, some people that they're praying for a mate. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not my friends. But, but you know they're praying and they say, well, if I was just in a relationship with somebody, I would be happy. That doesn't work. It's not the case. Because probably they'll drive you totally nuts. You, know? <laughs> you may even shoot them and go to jail for the rest of your life and kill them. But you know, that's what we think. We think, or if we just had a lot of money. Oh, if I just had money, I could pay this bill and I could get a new car and a new van and I could get lots of groceries in the house and I could do this and I'd buy a new house out in the country and I'd get some goats and stuff. If I just had money. You know, I used to have money and it didn't make me happy. I remember coming over here years ago and I had $2,000 in my pocket to spend just to buy things. And my bills were all paid, and I had a nice house and everything. And I come over here, and I spent like about $250. And it was the worst feeling of my life to walk around with a pocket full of money and not know what to buy, because I didn't need anything. It was terrible. I wasn't happy. And I thought, you know, driving back home, I thought, wow, you know, you think if you have all this money that you're going to be so happy. You're going to be so happy. But money doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't. And I started to think, why are people in such messes as they're in? Why was I in such messes that I got myself into? And it was because I didn't totally, totally, totally surrender to Jesus Christ. I wanted him when I wanted him. I wanted him to pull me out of the gutter when I was flat in my face. I remember one day waking up, I was hiring a kite. And I woke up in this, I don't even know how I really got there. But I woke up and I'm on a basement floor. <coughs> and you know those old bathtubs with the legs on them? Mm -hmm. Well, my face was stuck looking underneath this bathtub. 
And it's like, I woke up and it was like, oh, Annie, what are you doing? And <laughs> what caught my attention was the spiders that were in all the spider webs and everything. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, oh, man, there's got to be a better life than this. There's got to be. And I quickly got up and washed my face and put my wig on and made myself look like I was a straight person that was all happy. And, but inside of me was, Ann, what are you doing with your life? Spiders? You wake up to a spider? Not so bad waking up to your husband or wife or something, a spider? And I thought, Lord, how did I get so low? I was sleeping on an old mattress on a basement floor. And I didn't even think it was that bad for a while because at least it was in out of the snow and the rain and stuff like that. But, it, but then I started to think, God, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing with it? Now, if you had met me back then, you wouldn't. I was 103 pounds, and I, I, you know, to some people, I wasn't doing anything. I was just real skinny, and people would say, you've got to eat it, and you're losing a lot of weight. I'd say, yeah, I am, you know, and, and that. And they say, oh, you're so happy, and you've got such a wonderful boyfriend, and oh, I just wish I had what you had. And I thought, oh, my God, if people only knew. And a lot of us, you know, we come here, and maybe even on Facebook or something, and, you know, but the truth is we're not happy. We might say we are. We might say we are. We might act like we are. Oh, I got the world by the... <laughs> But, but, you know, we might do that. We might think, and people say, oh, you know, so, so, so happy. That is wonderful. She's so happy. He's so happy. He's got it all together. But the truth is, you really don't have it together. You're putting on this phony front. And, and you know, life goes on. And the longer we put on the mask and the longer we pretend to be happy when we're really not, we're wasting time. Time. If, if someone had come to me years ago and said, you know, Ann, if you keep living this phony lifestyle, one day it's going to catch up with you. And I, I would say, oh, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And I would never have dreamt that the years would have went by so quickly as they did. I never would have. And, you know, I, I listened to Perry Stone there last night, and he was saying he started preaching at 17 years old. And he said, you know, his dad sat him down and he said, Perry, he says, one day you're going to be like 75, 80 years old and you're going to look back and say, where did the years go? Where did the years go? What happened to them? And Perry says, I'm only, I think he's like 58 or something now. And he says, you know, I don't even know where the last 40 years went. They're gone. We can't bring them back. So what we do now is we say, okay, Lord, I want your peace. In every situation, I want your peace. I want to walk where I'm happy, where I have that, that inside of me that I know everything's going to be okay, even though it doesn't look like it's going to be okay. I want to know what God's plan is for my life. I don't know if you guys go through that. I used to go through it a lot. Sometimes I still do. I go to him and I say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Like, I don't feel like I'm a preacher. You know, like, I don't feel like I'm capable of stuff and then I start to say well I'm really not capable but maybe the Jesus inside of me if I keep true to God maybe the Jesus inside of me will shine out and maybe I can help somebody maybe it's just a smile maybe it's just you know a sandwich who knows and you don't know what God has called for you I see people sitting here today and I I'm not going to say who you are but I see you maybe a year down the road doing something like I'm doing I really do, because God can t if God could pull me out of the gutter and out of the dirt and the filth that I was in, God can do it for anybody. You don't even have to be, you know, into a bad situation or even living a bad life. But you might just be living in that situation where you think, God could never use me. You know, I don't. Maybe it's your past. Maybe when you were a kid, so things have happened to you and you feel... You know, well, after what I've been through, God could never do this to me. Couldn't do it. But you know something? He can do it. But you know, we got to let go of everything behind us and look forward and say, okay, now, you know, 2017 is almost over. Can you imagine that? What is 2018 going to bring? I wonder. I really wonder. I'm going to read Psalm 27 because it really hit me this morning, too, as I was doing some studying. Psalm 27, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and <coughs> fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. <laughs> I just love this church. Eh? It's like, <laughs> Let's change the church to the lighthouse bar or something. You know what I mean? You're in and out, in and out. They're What's going on, Wally? Let him in. I'm sailing him, but I can't carry the. They're helping him down the stairs. Oh, it's Mary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go on with this wonderful scripture. <laughs> She'll just be coming in, we'll be saying amen. <laughs> Watch me pull it. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Here's a, here's a story. I, I promised myself today I wasn't going to tell too many stories. But you know, I remember I lived in Niagara Falls, Canada for a while, and I lived out in the country. And I wasn't living right, okay? And what I used to do, now don't tell the police, okay? okay. <laughs> if you do and I go to prison, you're in trouble. No, but I used to, the guys that were on the run, you know, they would come to my house out in the country. And so I would like hide them out. Like, no, but I was in the middle of nowhere. So nobody really knew. And it was kind of exciting. You know, it's like, oh, hi, come on in. Here's your room. Keep your mouth shut, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. And here, um, the one guy stayed with me just for maybe two months. And it was getting really hot because it was on the news. <laughs> and it was, it was in the newspapers. This guy's on the run, and we're looking for him, right? And it's like, oh, dear, I'll pray. You know, I'll pray that you find him because I don't know where he is. Meanwhile, he's shacked up at my house. And so anyway, the funny thing was, he came to me one day and he said, Ann, I have to leave. He says, I know I'm safe here, but he says, I have to go because if I get caught, you're going to go to jail too. And, and he was just a nice guy, you know, that really had just got caught up in some stuff. And so I wished him farewell and I gave him some sandwiches, you know, as you do, and off he went. It was 10 years later, I met this church, and I had given my life to the Lord now. And I met this church, and here this guy comes up, and he's got his Bible. Now, when I hit him out, he had the long hair and the beard. You know, you couldn't really see his face, because it was all this hair and everything. And he was really a tough dude and that. Well, here this guy comes up to me, all clean shaven, and he's got his Bible. And he goes, hi, Ann. And I kind of looked at him, and I said, hi. He says, don't you remember me? And, it, and then it was like, oh my God. And I says, what happened to you? Like, it's been 10 years. He says, Ann, I left your house. And he says, I was just hitting another city. And the police picked me up, and I did 10 years in prison. But he says, you know, I'm so glad I did. Because he says, you know why? He says, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And he said, now I'm serving God. And he wasn't one of these, you know, inside preachers kind of a thing. He, he was genuine, and he really meant what he said. And afterwards, I thought, wow, I hid him out in my pavilion. And, you know, it was that's what I did. But here's God. Here's God saying, he's going to hide. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Wow. Isn't it good to have someone looking out for you? And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Shush. Can't talk here. Did you know that? <laughs> I haven't been one, eh? <laughs> Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. How many pray and really seek his face? Like, it's not just, well, Lord, thank you for the food today, and help me sleep really good tonight, 
and uh, you know, bless Joe Blow over here and, and Susie Homemaker over here, and amen. How many do that? Or how many go before the Lord and really seek his face? I neglect it sometimes, but you know my desire in my heart is I want more of Jesus. Because I know without him in my life I'm nothing. I know it. Hear, O oh Lord, my Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide, hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O Lord of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the last verse, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Leave him alone, Angie. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait. Can you wait? When your kids are going into school, do you wait? Does the teacher say, okay, wait in line here? You know they used to do that to me? Wait in line. I used to hate it. I don't want to wait. I want to get in there. Wait in line and go single file. Maybe they don't do that anymore. That was kind of in the dark ages. Do they do that now where you've got to wait? Okay, now. So God says, wait. Jesus says, wait on me. Wait on me. Waiting is not sitting there drinking a cup of coffee, wishing we had something. Waiting in the Hebrew means to keep busy, keep doing what you're doing, and keep doing the good things. But just sit back and, and just, well, he'll be here soon. Or this answer is coming soon. This is going to happen soon. I'm just going to wait on him. And when you're doing that, serve others while you're waiting. Why do they call them waitresses? Because they're waiting on us. So there's two things there to do. I'm getting, you're not going like this. What's the matter? You got five keep, minutes. Oh. <laughs> five more minutes, kids, that we eat. Yay. But you know, God is good. God is good, isn't he? He really is. If there's anything on your mind, and you need help with it, please contact me. If anybody wants to give their heart to Jesus and you haven't done it, I always ask this. And you know why I ask this? Because one day we're going to stand before God. God's going to bring out his big book. And he's going to say, you want to get into heaven? Let me see if your name's here. And if your name is not in the book of life and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, you're not going to make it. Okay? So if there's anybody that says, you know, I want to get right with God. I want, I want my life happy. I want to change. I want to see my life change. I want to see things take place in my life that are going to make me feel good inside. Maybe I'm having a rough time at home. Adults do. Maybe the kids do too. We don't know and they'll probably never tell us. <coughs> but if you want that, that joy and that peace that only Jesus can give, You've got to get right with them, and you've got to start following him. We're going to close in prayer. Where's my prayer warrior? Come on, kiddo. Is there anybody that wants to come up for prayer? Get up here. Put your ball down and come up for prayer. You too, baby? Okay, step up. Come on, step up over here. Have you given Jesus your heart? Oh, all right. You're not praying for a boyfriend, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to give their heart to Jesus? Who wants prayer? You come on up too, kiddo. Who's your friend? You want prayer? You want to give your heart to Jesus? Okay. Isn't it nice to see the kids give their heart to Jesus? I mean, for real. It's wonderful. Okay, here's what you do. Look at me. Straight in the eye. <laughs> Say, dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come into my heart, make me a new child, live with me forever, 
in Jesus' precious name. I believe your son died on the cross for me. And I want to serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that wonderful? I just love getting the kids involved. I just got this thing inside me lately. We're going to pray for you too, honey. But I just love to see the kids because you know something, one day I'm not going to be around. I might be in Florida or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I know everybody wants to go with me, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're going to do a mission trip down there one day. But you know, I love to see the kids getting involved because this is our next generation. I want to see them, you know, make the sandwiches. I want to see them give out the cookies. <coughs> I want to see, and they're so sweet. And I'm going to tell you something about the kids. You know about the kids? I can go to a kid. This is blunt here. I can go to a kid and I say, can you take pictures for me? Can you do the cookies? Sure. I did it today, right? I said to you, can you pray? Yeah. I can go to an adult. Oh, I don't know if I could. It's like, you know, let's become as a little child again. Let's do that. Because these kids are growing up, and if we nurture them, and we love them, and we encourage them, we're going to see our city changed. We are. Right? Okay, you say the prayer, baby. God, just be with all, and have, and let us have strength, and just bless the fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want prayer, special prayer, honey? Get up here, we're done. Ladies, come on up here and pray oh, for our friend here. with her now. We're coming with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And you stay in here, too. Come on up here. I, I, you know why I asked them to come up? Because one day they're going to be up here praying. Father God, we just ask you to be with Terry right now, Jerry right now, right now, Lord God. Just bless her, Lord. Give her the desires of her heart. Father, be with her mother, Lord God. Just bless that woman right now, Lord God, and touch her. She's unhappy right now where she is, but Father, we know you can take her from that place, and you can bring her into real happiness, Lord God. Give Jerry wisdom, Lord, and give her all of her needs met in Jesus' precious name. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for everything that you're going to do. Jerry's mom is in a nursing home right now, right? And she needs clothes, size um, small, and she needs other little things. I have some, and I'm sure Joanne has some. But if anybody else has something at home, speak to Jerry and say, what can I do for you? What can I do? Let's join together as a family, and let's try to back each other and help each other. Lord, 